cities. Just come and think of me, pray for me, do the right things. You'll be great. Now, draw the parables. Okay, I'll try. Um, the Arjuna mm -hmm. who goes into battle, mm -hmm. whether real or allegorical, uh, is not the same person as the person who was depressed in the first chapter. Mm -hmm. He's now filled with Krishna, mm -hmm. which means that his knowledge has changed of who he is. Mm -hmm. He started out thinking he was this little guy and his problem, mm -hmm. then it turns out he's vast because he's, he has the same consciousness as Krishna. Mm -hmm. That means he's, he has now has a divine consciousness. Uh, he also, when he's acting, we might think that it's some little local action, throwing a spear or ducking a spear, mm -hmm. but actually he's now acting as a, an essential ingredient in the entire cosmos. Right? And when he's uh, then uh, seems to be intently focused on the, the war, in a certain sense, that's only a minor part of his consciousness. His real consciousness is on this sort of infinite extent of reality that Krishna has revealed. So he is a fundamentally or essentially different person. He looks, he might look the same. I think if we could see his eyes, we would see that he was not angry, he was calm. Mm -hmm. He was totally, uh, totally, he was like a Buddha. He was just totally relaxed and peaceful, even though he, by virtue of his obligation, his, his dharma, his duty, mm -hmm. he was throwing spears he didn't want to kill anyone more than he was willing to be killed himself. Mm -hmm. So all of that difference of the, the enemy and himself had dissolved, and now it was all Krishna, that both sides were Krishna. So this is a great mystical transformation. But does that mean that he almost, or in fact, merged with the universal energy of Krishna yes. or the Atman or the Brahman or yes. the consciousness? Yes. It so did. Th that's what that so that is, is the objective? That is the objective. Okay. Now let's go to the Western tradition, the Abrahamic tradition. Okay, let me just add a little piece. Okay. But because that's a very complicated objective mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to do and even it's hard to know if you've done it, Mm -hmm. And some people think they've done it, might be didn't do it and then do bad deeds, mm -hmm. okay? That it's a much safer and sensible way for mm -hmm. most people in most circumstances not to aim at that or to aim at that kind of indirectly and really to focus on where the Gita begins as Gandhi did in chapters uh, two and three. And say, look, if we could get this right, if we could act selflessly, mm -hmm. that would be a good start. That's where the Gita starts very appropriately, it starts there, that's where we live. No one cannot act. We have to start there. Then, if we do that well, as Arjuna presumably did, or Krishna wouldn't have led him further, mm -hmm. so once he learned to act selflessly, then he was ready for true knowledge, then he was ready for love, then he was ready for etc. And then he could have the vision of Krishna. Otherwise, he would have looked around to see Krishna as a god, and he only would have seen a charioteer. Mm -hmm. He could only see that Krishna was a charioteer by being transformed by the presence of, of Krishna and the instruction. But the presence may be even more important than the instruction. So now if we turn to the New Testament mm -hmm. and to the teachings of Jesus, mm -hmm. but also the presence of Jesus mm -hmm. or, or Christ, um, it, in the New Testament, there is some amount of emphasis on duty, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have quite the same emphasis on dharma and karma, mm -hmm. somewhat implicit, because mm -hmm. it's a traditional culture, and all traditional cultures, I think, have that in common, mm -hmm. all right? But the, the, clearly, the major teaching, you could almost say the only teaching of the New Testament is mm -hmm. love. That's what Jesus is about, or Christ. Th that's what he taught. Love, love God, love your, love your neighbor, even love your enemies. So now, I'm not saying that's not in the Bhagavad Gita. It is the bhakti yoga of the, the Bhagavad Gita, the love yoga, the devotional yoga, is parallel, 
comparable, similar to uh, agape, um, which is the Greek term, but it's, the, it's or charity. It's the love uh, which is selfless. Mm. So I think they're quite similar in that regard. In other respects, one is Indian, one is Hebraic, and even though it's Hebraic, uh, because it's written in Greek, it has Greek concepts, so it's already fusing two worlds, in a certain sense, the Bhagavad Gita is in only one world, but it's fusing four or five or six traditions of South India, mm -hmm. uh, Indian, or uh, uh, South Asia or Indian, uh, so which then comes later to be called Hindu. <clears throat> so in the, in the New Testament, the emphasis is on love almost uh, to the neglect of everything else. It's not a social philosophy. It's not uh, solving the problem of, of withdrawal of the senses as in uh, yoga. It is entirely the teaching of selflessness and the sacrifice of the self uh, in favor of divinity. It has a slightly different emphasis, but I believe that at the height of the Gita and the height of the New Testament are completely compatible. That's what I believe too. But if you look at the, the you know, Peter and Paul and John, all those things, you do find they put a lot of emphasis on the Maya aspect of Christ. You know, doing things, you know, he's able to go and cure uh, lepers or he's take one fish and make 50,000 fish out of it. I don't understand the reason for the emphasis. I say after I read that over and over again, I say, I got it. Tell me more. Now, when you said, did you say Maya? My, meaning uh, m miracles. Oh, miracles. Uh, miracles. Okay, okay. They, they emphasize a lot about m miracles yes. in each of those uh, right. New Testament sections. Right. right. And I just wonder, is there, what, what's the purpose of it? Okay. And what's a, uh, what's a comparison to that within the Gita? Well, I'll start with the Gita. Okay. The greatest miracle I can imagine mm -hmm. is the appearance of a god to a soldier ah, very good. and then says, now pay attention soldier, mm -hmm. do what I tell you mm -hmm. and you'll see something really great. Mm -hmm. And 